He's an architect experienced in steel structures. Now Richard Gage is touring the country with a controversial message about September 11. Richard Gage is here to show us why he's calling for a more thorough investigation into the collapse of the World Trade Center buildings. Thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. It's great to be here. Well, first of all, give us a little bit of, more about your background. Well, I'm an architect of 20 years, mm -hmm. member of the American Institute of Architects, and have been studying steel frame fireproof buildings uh, for about that long. We, we ask that for clarification because as we get into this, we want people to make sure that you're not just somebody with a, a wacky idea. Right. Okay? You come with some science to you. What is the official reason for the collapse of the World Trade Center towers? Well, we're told that the planes uh, hit the buildings and the, there was an explosion and a, a fire. And about an hour and a half later, in the case of the North Tower, the buildings uh, collapsed due to structural weakening due to the fires. Mm -hmm. The problem is is that uh, we don't have uh, large gradual deformations associated with uh, collapses, and fires in high-rises have never brought down a, a steel frame uh, high-rise building at all, ever. And what we have, unfortunately, is the evidence in the Twin Towers and the third uh, skyscraper to collapse that day, which most people don't know anything about it. We have the evidence of the ten key features of controlled demolition. In the case of Building 7, it collapses straight down into its own footprint at free fall speed in the there first the hundred feet. It's, it's dropping, as you can see, uh, symmetrically, smoothly, at free fall speed in the first hundred feet, two and a half seconds. This is uncanny. There's 40,000 tons of structural steel designed to resist this collapse. Is it, what, a 47-story building? Yeah. This is called Building 7, right? Uh, a football field away from the Twin Towers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're showing is left what happened, in fact, right is a controlled where you are using, or the people who made this happen, used demolition. Indeed, uh, and this is a direct devices. comparison. And you can see that, indeed, almost uh, free fall speed, free fall acceleration through 40,000 tons of structural steel. That is uh, uncanny. So we have 700 architects and engineers demanding a new investigation as a result of this evidence and the evidence in the World Trade Center that is very explosive. Almost every architect and engineer we show this information to agrees with us that these are controlled demolitions. If we can get them to look at the information, because obviously the implications of a controlled demolition are dark for our country, yeah. because that means somebody besides al-Qaeda was involved, because these have to be easily three of the most highly secure buildings outside the Pentagon. Now, if that was a controlled demolition, would there not be any uh, evidence at the ground level of explosives within the, uh, the, the, the building debris. itself, that's the debris that's left? Indeed. And what we find down there is pools of molten iron. What does that mean? Uh, several tons. Exactly. What is that doing there? The first responders see it. The structural engineers see it. It's documented by FEMA, the melting of steel. Normal office fires is what's supposed to have brought these buildings down, along with jet plane impacts. But jet fuel and office fires don't produce molten iron or molten steel. It doesn't begin to melt until 3,000 degrees. But what we have is uh, the fires only produce maybe 14, 1,600 degrees. So what produced all that molten iron? Well, it has in it the chemical evidence of a special incendiary, uh, which is thermite, a high-tech incendiary used to cut through steel like you a hot knife through that? butter. Indeed, in all of the dust throughout uh, lower Manhattan, uh, we have a four to six inch thick layer of, of, of this dust, and throughout it we have uh, evidence of s tiny spheres, billions of them, several tons uh, of m previously molten iron. Well, how does that happen? If you have molten iron, the, the byproduct of thermite is molten iron, and it's dispersed throughout all of this dust. Now, how, you were allowed to go in and get samples and examine it? Oh, there's, there's plenty of dust. Uh, a lot of people have this dust, and four of these samples have been sent to physicist Stephen Jones, uh, formerly of Brigham Young University. And they find in it uh, not only these spheres, uh, with which, which others have found too, USGS, mm -hmm. R.J. Lee, doing toxicological studies. Uh, this, these spheres have uh, iron, aluminum, uh, fluorine, manganese, very unusual elements associated only with thermite. And there's small chips of unignited thermite as well. This is very high-tech thermite, nanothermite. It's not found 
uh, in a cave in Afghanistan. It's produced in very sophisticated Defense Department contracting laboratories. Okay, well, we have an enemy here we, uh, that the finger has been pointed to, that this it was the work of al-Qaeda, this was the work of Osama bin Laden, at least to get the planes all going into the buildings and into the field in Pennsylvania and into the Pentagon. Is there no way that they then could still be the enemy that placed those in the buildings first and then did the incendiary device via a plane second? Right. Well, the, what you have to ask is who had access to the buildings? Did al-Qaeda have access to these highly secure buildings? Probably not. Did they have access to sophisticated uh, nanothermite where the particles are 1,000 times smaller than a human hair? Probably not. Somebody else has to be investigated and that's why we have 700 architects and engineers demanding a real investigation. We don't have the whole theory as to how this happened, who did it, why. We just lay out the facts like we did last night in the Veterans Memorial Auditorium, and we, we demand a real investigation, and they'll find out who, why, how, et cetera. Okay. Then let me ask you, uh, uh, I'm person X. I want to place something in one of those buildings. Where would I carry it? How big would it be? Is yeah. it that visible that I would be spotted by security? Or could I place it uh, in one of my tooth fillings? Yeah. We're talking about several tons of nanothermite and ordinary thermite. It, one would have to have access through security. So the security company involved for the World Trade Center should be thoroughly investigated. And uh, it turns out to be Securicom, Stratasec. Somebody should look and see who's on the board of those companies. Uh, some very interesting individuals uh, turn out to be. In addition, one would have to have the cover of, say, an elevator modernization, which was, in fact, going on nine months prior to 9-11, so that uh, there were workers in, throughout the World Trade Center um, in, in, in the, uh, that had access to the hoistway, that, which is immediately adjacent to the core columns and, and, and beams in the building. You're not trying to freak out the country, but you can't help but feel a little freaked out by this. Yeah, you're getting it. Yeah. Um, and, of course, this is something we want to talk with you about a whole lot more, and we're out of time. But we do have a great deal of information uh, on our website, knph.com. Thank you very much for your time today. You're so welcome. Thank you for joining opening us. up a lot to think about. We'll be right back. Results are in, people. Now, this is my favorite pie chart. You guys are going to love this. Friday, a huge fireworks show.